Welcome everyone. I'm Vanessa Laborde from Dreamwriter Productions. Welcome to the Planet Protector Academy webinar. We are really pleased to see you all here. We've got folks from across Canada and the U.S. on this call, so welcome everyone. I am the Executive Director of Dreamwriter Productions, and I am also one of the co-creators of the Planet Protector Academy. I've got a couple of my colleagues on the line with me who are helping out today, and I'm just going to invite them to come in with their cameras and introduce themselves to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. I'm the uh, Client Relations Manager for Dreamwriter Productions, and I'm going to be your main point of contact after the webinar if you have any questions or uh, are interested in more information. Um, I'm Heidi Hartman, and I'm here to help throughout this webinar. Um, just so you all know, we are going to have it so that you are muted uh, throughout the webinar, but we will have an opportunity for you to ask questions. And we ask you to ask your questions through the chat window that's on the side of your screen. So we hope that you have fun on this call, on this webinar, that you learn something, and that you um, bring back some information and inspiration to any programs that you're running in your region. Um, so first, I'd like to actually start with a poll. And um, I am going to put this poll up on the screen for you. So um, here you go. So which of the following behaviors do you find feel is the hardest to get people to change? And you can all vote now. Turning off lights, taking shorter showers, driving less, um, turning off computers, or stopping idling their cars. So I'll just give everybody a moment to vote. The big winner was um, driving less, as we suspected. Most people said driving less, I think it was like 90%. And that's what we feel too. Um, and now I have a question for the chat area. We can test the chat area now. What is something that you feel gets in the way of people changing their behaviors around driving? Perceived lack of time, says Carrie Manser from Whistler. Um, people fear the loss of freedom, says Barbara from Riverside. Public transportation not reliable, says Michelle from Langley, BC. Um, lack of options, says Krista from Langley. Laura Frank from Coldstream, BC says, infrastructure for alternative transportation, like sidewalks and bike lanes. That's great. Weather, says Perry from Ottawa. Yes, in Ottawa, weather is, an, is a problem, isn't it? Um, in a lot of places, it's a problem. Great, thanks. Now, um, I, uh, we agree on all those, of course, and the Planet Protection Academy is in part designed to combat those problems, mindset, time and habits. Oh, we still got answers coming in. Thanks, Maya and Laura. Um, so, the Planet Protector Academy is not a typical climate behavior change education program, and so this is not a typical webinar as well. So I'm actually going to start with the Planet Protector theme song, because in the program, we try to get kids to actually take on the identity of Planet Protectors, because we feel that when you have the identity of a person who does a kind of thing, you're more likely to continue doing that in your life. So of course, if you are a planet protecting superhero, you need a theme song. So Jen, can you cue the music? There's motions, you can sing along. Planet needs us to take a stand and we're gonna do it cause we're planet protectors. The power, it lies in our hands and we're gonna do it cause we're planet protectors. Every single day, we'll do our part to keep the planet green. Every single day, we'll make a difference. Just you wait and see. We're planet protectors. We got the power. We're planet protectors. Okay. We're planet protectors. We got the power. We're planet protectors. Okay. Okay, there you go. The theme song of the Planet Protector Academy. Hopefully that will not stick in your head all day. Um, so I'm going to give you a really brief outline of what we're going to do today, and then um, we'll begin. So I'm going to give you an, a quick overview of the program and all of its features and benefits. And then we're going to take a look at the site itself. It's a website that gets projected in the front of a classroom. So we're going to look at the, the website, and then we're going to have a deeper look at the measurement theory and practice behind it and some of the educational value of it. And again, at any time, uh, we will take questions. So, Jen, if you wouldn't mind loading the lovely PowerPoint. There we go. So, Dreamwriter Productions, 
engaging kids and driving extraordinary change. Um, and that's me. Our mission is to build generations of ecologically responsible citizens through the excitement of live theater and multimedia. And we consider ourselves to be youth engagement experts. And we've been working for 17 years and we have experience engaging almost a million kids, providing an immersive experience that engages the mind, body, heart, and spirit of children. And when we do that, we find that kids actually go home and change their families' behaviors. And they become agents of change. So now we're going to show you a quick video of some of DreamRider's live performances that we do in schools that we've reached almost a million kids doing. DreamRider. By recycling, we can take the same metal from the old electronics and put them into new electronics. Recycling means we don't have to blow up as many mountains and we make way less garbage. Professor, the boss sent me here to get some equipment for my new assignment. Ah yes, your new assignment, Dr. Carbon. My evil nemesis, he makes me so angry. Did you know Dr. Carbon is releasing massive greenhouse gases into the air? He is a major contributor to climate change. No. Yeah, he is up to some no good stuff, Nix. So what kind of super cool stuff do you have for my mission this time? For Dr. Carbon, you need my masterpiece, the Enviro Awareness Helmet. But thanks to my invention, your environmental awareness has kicked into high gear. Ah, uh, Professor, you're right. When I look around, I can see all sorts of ways to help the environment. Let's start with the lights in this room. Look at how many lights you have on. Do you really need this many lights on? Maybe I clean my goggles, I can turn some lights off. And you should change your light bulbs to compact fluorescents like this one. We started as a project of the city of Vancouver in uh, 1997. And we're now a registered charity 
doing municipal outreach and demand side management. And we've found uh, that we're so effective at empowering children to lead change at home that we now serve 15 municipalities and translate the um, regional transportation authority as a founding partner for the Planet Sector Academy. And we reach with them 65,000 kids a year. And just to be clear, the last video that we had um, was all about our previous work, not about the Planet Protector Academy, which is what we'll be describing now. But before we do, um, we have a, a little video of one of our municipal partners talking about our effectiveness, Jen Bailey from the City of Vancouver. The City of Vancouver has worked with Dream Riding Theatre for 17 years, and they've been a fantastic partner in helping us with the education of children. They really understand the municipal needs around messaging with water conservation, waste reduction, and elimination of vandalism. They are fantastic at engaging kids and really inspiring them to take meaningful behavior change. I would highly recommend them as a, as a partner. We have a short video with one of the parents who's talking about uh, the behavior change that she saw in her daughter after she saw water conservation play four years ago and um, is still seeing the effect of it now. My name is Portia and I have a daughter, Tanner. She's 10 now. Um, she was in grade one when she experienced the play. I was brushing my teeth one morning and letting the water, you know, run as I usually have done my whole life. And she says, you're a water waster, mom. And then proceeded to show me how to do it properly. You know, so it obviously works. It's a really great program. She'll still say something, you know. She will still say, uh, you know, that's really a, a huge waste of, you know, water, right? So it's really, it's really interesting, right? It's, yeah. it's working and it's good, you know. So I'm really proud of her. So we saw what we were doing locally and saw the effect that we were having. And when we looked around the country and internationally, we noticed that municipalities everywhere were having difficulty getting people to change their behaviors. And so we looked at how we might be able to help. And we asked ourselves, we thought that we'd be able to help um, using inter interactive media plus our engagement capacity with kids and that we could make a big change in the world because uh, we're actually a charity. I didn't mention that before, but we're a registered charity. And uh, our mission is to make as big a change environmentally as we can and to use children um, and their power of leadership. So we know that transportation behaviors are really hard to change. This is a quote from the Canadian Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And they say, transportation trends have formidable social, societal momentum supported by strongly entrenched patterns of individual behavior. And we can help with that. Um, we plan in the future to also have uh, programs on water conservation and zero waste. So we did three years of experimentation before we were digital. Um, and we created an experience in the classroom that's interactive and fun like the shows. And we asked ourselves, how can we make kids want to change behaviors how can we make behavior change fun and exciting for kids? How can we make it easy for families to change? And we spent three years, as I said, testing and developing in the classroom before we became a digital program. So we developed an experience, an immersive experience in the classroom with the kids that's designed to create and measure behavior change. And it's called the Planet Protector Academy. It is a training ground for planet protectors and it is our most innovative program yet. It is a six week, six unit curriculum linked classroom program for grades four to six. And it is designed to create behavior change through engagement, through creative and meaningful activities, and uh, to have children be agents of change and superheroes with missions. We've had incredible results. 75% of the families who used the program last year saved energy. We were in 60 classrooms in BC. 75% um, of families stopped idling, 49% of families drove less. There's a group called Destination Conservation that does work in Alberta and BC, and they told us that most environmental education programs have a behavior change rate of about 4%. And I actually think that's because they're looking at educating first, and then they measure the behavior change, whereas we actually do the opposite. We look at how to change behavior and how to motivate behavior change first. Um, a social marketing consultant, Scott Sinclair, told us that he'd never heard of behavior change results anywhere that good. So 
we're really happy. Our biggest uh, measurement that we love personally is that 83% of the children feel like real life plant protectors. And that's exciting to us because as I said before, we feel that if they feel like that's who they are, that change is going to be a lasting change. And so how are we getting such amazing results? Combining the power of art, comedy, collaboration, role play, game theory, and digital media makes behavior changing fun. And it makes measurement a game instead of something boring. And it makes reporting exciting. And so the Planet Protector Academy is first of all a story. We welcome the children as participants in the story world. They get an ID badge as Planet Protectors. They are characters in the world. And they each get a mission book that uh, where they take home and they go on their mission. So they have missions, they're superheroes. And we use a laddered approach. So we start on the bottom with the green one, turning off lights, which is a very simple activity to do. There's no sacrifice involved, minimal effort, no loss of anything. And that's very easy for children to start their parents in the process of following their lead, turning off lights. Then once we've established that, we go into something that's a little bit harder, which is shorter showers. There's a small sacrifice of that lovely hot water, but it's minimal effort again. So then we build on that success by the next mission, which is to not idle their vehicles, which requires you to actually think, is this a situation where I should or should not idle or keep my car running? And then of course the fourth one, driving less requires sacrifice and effort, but we've gotten the family by this time used to following the children's lead. And so that's why we're having such high rates of behavior change. Um, so the Plan Protector Academy is also a game. We use game theory and points. This is a, a screenshot of the website, which we'll look at in a minute. And um, everything is involved in points for kids. Kids love points. They love doing things for points. They love getting points for their team. Teams work together to encourage each other to get more points in the game. And the academy, uh, the academy is fun. There's lots of comedy in the videos. It's fun to learn. It's We use arts which uh, engage the whole child, music, art, and theater, to uh, create an engagement with the kids. And lastly, the Plan Protector Academy is actually very educationally innovative, we discovered. Uh, from our experience of being in gyms, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of gyms over the years, uh, we have learned face-to-face, -face, myself and my creative team have been in front of kids, and have learned what actually engages the children. And this has resulted in our program being very innovative educationally. We'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, and um, I'll go on to the next. It brings digital technology into the classroom. It reaches every child through multiple learning styles. And on top of all of that, it teaches skills that kids need today that are called 21st century learning skills, like collaboration and problem solving and brainstorming. And it's designed to make behavior change measurement fun. This is uh, what the program looks like in the classroom. 98% of teachers say that we are very or extremely educational. And 100% of teachers we surveyed say that we change children's environmental behaviors. Amy Fournier from the city of Vancouver says, you've got to see it to believe how engaged DreamWriter gets kids. And so this is the website, the Planet Protector which we are going to go and show you now. So Jen, if you will take us over to that. So again, the program is projected at the front of the class. It's not a kid by themselves on the computer in isolation. Okay, so as you can see, there's a path that we follow, that the teacher follows through the program to, it's very easy for them to find out where to go. And each of these points has content in it, primarily videos. And in these videos, our characters, Esmeralda Planet Protector, her sidekick Goober, and our game show host talk to kids on the screen as if they were live Skyping, and they lead the class through the program. So it's a five, a six, six modules, and there are six screens that we'll show you now. The first one here, the welcome screen, introduces the children to the program and teaches them about climate and weather. And the second module, we click to that now, Operation Darkroom, the children learn about energy and they receive their first mission, which is to turn off lights and to get their families to turn off lights. The module three, which we'll go to now, 
is Operation Shower Power, where the children learn where their hot water comes from. They learn about heat and energy, and they have a mission to take shorter showers and to remind their families to take shorter showers. Module four, Keep Car Cool. They learn about transportation issues, and their mission is to ask their parents to stop idling and to maintain their vehicles. Module five, Go Car Free. Children learn about transportation alternatives, and of course their mission is to get their families to drive less. And then we have one final module, module six, which is a celebration module where we celebrate the children's achievements. We're gonna go back to module three for a moment, and we're gonna show you a bit more of the layout of the program. If you look on the left-hand side, it says team scores. So that's where um, the teams all count their points. The class is divided into four teams, and the teams work together for points. And of course, the planet gets all the points at the end of the day. And they can change the name of their team. So the water team could be called the tsunamis, for example and they can enter their name there. And um, there's an info button at the beginning of each uh, page, each module, where the teacher can find out about the lesson for the day, what will be learned, the curriculum links, and the materials that they'll need. And then every time we can start with the Planet Protectors theme song, which we won't do now because I already sang it for you earlier, but the kids really love theme song and they sing it every day and it helps them to remember their missions as they go. And uh, then we're gonna click on 3.2, which is the mission report. So this is where the children report back on their missions to the website and we collect the data, which we then share with our partners. So that screen's gonna pop up. In a minute, we ask the children to give a show of hands so that the actual, the points that they're getting in the game are not related to the mission reports, reports because a child could say that they had 45 short showers in the last week, and that wouldn't really be helpful to us. So um, we'll talk a little bit more later about our theory around the mission reports and behavior change measurements, but just to see that that all is collected by the website and we can sort it by city and, and province or state and country and so forth. So that's great. And now, uh, Jen, if you'd bring up the mission book, we'll show you how the children take this information home. They each get a mission book that has activities in it. And there's the mission book, thanks. And if you go down to the next, the next page, you see there's the wrap, time to wrap. And in the next page, we have the first mission report where the children mark down every time that they turn off the lights, that they remember to turn off the lights, or that they remind their parents to turn off the lights, and they get points for that. And um, also, um, at the bottom of the right-hand side of that page, you'll see that there's a place for the parent signature. Um, great, so now we will show you the reward certificate, which the kids get at the end. There we go, there's the reward certificate. So we have one for the winning team and one for each child that, per that participates. And then we'll show you the uh, paper craft that each child gets. Okay, th thank you. So I want to show you a couple of videos from the program. Hello, Apprentice Planet Protectors. I'm Esmeralda Planet Protector. And Gooba. Gooba and I are here today to welcome you to the Planet Protector Academy. Not everyone gets into the Academy, so congratulations for making it this far. You are now all Apprentice Planet Protectors. An apprentice is somebody who's learning something, like me. Thanks, Gooba. Yeah, who oh, is Esmeralda? Can I tell them what a planet protector is? Sure, Goober. A planet protector is someone who's protecting the planet. Ah, very helpful, Goober. I'm sure they couldn't have figured that one out. It's what I'm here for. Goober's right. Planet protectors protect the planet. We protect the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the land that grows the food that we eat. This is serious business, kids, so no fooling around. Yeah, serious business. You gotta be ready to fight for your planet. Whoa, whoa! Ow. The Planet Protector Academy is a game, but it's also real life. I'm going to be sending you on real life missions, and I'm counting on you. You have the power. Yes, you. 
You're going to be working together in teams, working together to protect the planet. Now, there's lots of ways to earn points. Oh, Miss Mama, Miss Mama, can, can we earn points by answering questions? Yes, Goober. And oh, oh, Miss Mama, can we earn points by going on missions? Sure, Goober. <laughs> and oh, Miss Mama, can we earn points by, uh... Goober, you could earn points by being quiet right now. Oh, yeah, I'll be quiet as a mouse. You won't even notice I'm here. Completely silent. You'd be able to hear a pin drop. All of Goober! Of... How about we explain the point system as we go along? Your teacher will help you through the program. Now... Uh, you're going to receive identity cards and mission books. Oh, yeah, look, Esmeralda, I already drew my avatar. I mean, I'm being quiet. I'm Sarah. And I'm Ian. And we're your hosts for the Planet Protector Academy game show. Yeah. An exciting show where teams compete for points. Oh, wait a minute. If this is a game show, there should be prizes. <gasps> can I win pie? What? No, you can't win pie. You can win a healthy planet with clean water, fresh air. That's good, but no pie. Ian, if you're good... Maybe I'll give you some pie at the end. Yay, pie! All right, kids. Now, we're going to play this game show a lot of times throughout the course of the program. So listen carefully to the rules. Here's how it goes. There's going to be one player from four teams come up to the front of the room and answer questions for points. Mm. Oh, tell me about the bonus action. Oh, in order to win bonus points, you have to perform... The bonus action. That's right. Now, today's bonus action is... A planet protector pose. Yeah, look at that. How many points I got now, Sarah? Huh? Yeah. You can only get one point per pose. Oh. Okay? Okay. Great. So, in order to answer questions, you need to use the buzzer. The buzzer. In. Show them how the buzzer works. The buzzer. So that's how the buzzer works. It's very simple. You just press the Oh, okay. That's good. Stop. Ian. Okay, wait, wait. You said to show them how the buzzer works. Go! Sarah, you're hey. breaking my buzzer! What? Alright, apprentices. Test your buzzers. <laughs> Not you, Ian. Alright, are you ready? The answer is yes, I am ready. Hands at your sides. Oh, and make sure you have elbow room. Your teachers will be scoring your answers. Alright, here comes the first question. What is weather? We will do an activity with all of you. Um, are you ready? So this is one of the activities that we do in the Planet Protector Academy, which is to write two lines of a rap about turning off of lights. Um, Jen um, just brought up some rap lyrics there. Have absolute permission to write the worst rhyme in the universe. You may write one as well as Grace Street, we don't know. Oh, thank you, Michelle from Vancouver. I, I'm going to read them. Turn off life and you will save. You will be very brave. So the kids um, actually do their raps in, um, in the classroom. Thanks, Michelle, for that. Okay, so we have uh, another video that we do want to show you. And again, apologies for those who can't see it. It is a peek inside the classroom because we have um, shown you all the things that are on the website and all the things that are on um, the, the printables that we give the teachers. But we haven't shown you what it actually looks like in the classroom because most of it actually is in the classroom. Oh, we got a couple of more wraps here that I'll read. Oh, we get, we're really getting some more. Okay, here we go. Good night, good night. It's time to turn out the light. Thank you. I've got an itch to turn off the switch and start the light to save on lights. Shut it off, make it black, see if you can see your cat. I like that one. <laughs> Keep things bright, turn off the light, and always choose to do what's right. Hey, that one scans too. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we will show the video of the peek inside the classroom. And hopefully, even if you can't hear it, you can see it, and you can see how engaged the kids get.
now you know what to do. So you tell the people what to do. Everybody, you now tell them to turn off the light. Because it's tonight. Turn off the light. And I say planet, you say protectors. Planet. Protectors! Planet. Protectors! Planet. Protectors! Hi, everyone. Um, so hopefully most of you saw that um, the engagement of the kids in the classroom is really very high. And we found that it has, the program has a lot of educational value um, because we knew that teachers take it into the classroom and had to solve problems for them because teachers are super overloaded. And, um, and so we made the program plug and play so that they could just literally turn the website on in front of the classroom and run it without having to think or do much prep. And of course, we had to connect it with curriculum so that it's um, covering programs that they need to that they need to cover. And as we mentioned before, it teaches kids things uh, that they need to survive and thrive in the 21st century, like collaboration, brainstorming, and cooperation together. It teaches children also to be leaders in the classroom. And additionally, one actual bonus is that very few kids see female superheroes these days. Most superheroes are men, most superheroes are scantily clad. And so um, Esmeralda gives a great role model for girls. We have another video um, of a teacher testimonial talking about the Plan Protector Academy in the classroom and how effective they find it. Hi, I would highly recommend the Planet Protector Academy to teachers. It's very easy to implement, it's highly motivating, and the students were very engaged in all of the activities and their homework assignments. And I think that they genuinely have made steps to improve and protect the planet. Uh, the program meets a variety of diverse learning needs. It's very easy for teachers to implement. It's ready at the click of a button. The lessons are prepared and it, it's um, a very easy way to meet some of the learning outcomes of the curriculum. You know, when I'd introduce a concept in class, because of what they were already doing with you with the game, the brainstorms were coming really quicker and they were, there was some really deep thinking. It wasn't just surface, oh, it hit all my targets for social studies and for science. So the kids loved it, very engaged. Um, it just really boosted the uh, enthusiasm for the whole integrated unit. So I strongly, strongly recommend the program. I want to talk a little bit about measurement because we've been working with municipalities for so long that we really designed the program to help meet municipal goals. And we did it in consultation with uh, three levels of government, municipal, provincial, and federal, and numerous stakeholders. And we brought them all together and asked them what do you need to do to change about climate behaviors? What are the main behaviors you need kids to help change with? And we created our play Keep Cool in 2008 based on that consultation. And that show has been running for years and years. And um, those uh, measurements and behavior changes are the ones that we're using in the Plant Sector Academy. Um, we also use, I mentioned before that we use the gaming separately from the measurements, so there's two separate things. And uh, one of the questions that we've had arise before is um, why aren't you measuring specific trip lengths or having more specific measurements that, than that? There are a couple of reasons for that. One is that uh, we were talking about Plans Link, who partnered with us on the Planet Protector Academy in its first year. Um, they're our regional transportation authority, and they concurred with us that Getting, while those measurements are great, getting to people to actually use them, and especially teachers to actually use them, is extremely difficult to do. It's really, really low. And the other piece, of course, is that because uh, audits are, frankly, not very interesting. And when we thought about how to make them interesting, we realized that getting an indication that change has happened is um, a bigger and easier thing to get in a measurement from kids and to try and get some accuracy around that. We also have a uh, one of our advisors is Robert Gifford from the University of Victoria. He is a PhD and his specialty is climate change behavior measurement. And he said to us that given that those deeper audits are, are built full of assumptions and approximations, that um, he said an indicator that a change has happened at all is as valuable 
as a deeper, more specific measurement because of those assumptions and approximations. Um, and again, the measurement that we like the best because it is a training ground for planet protectors is that 83% of the children actually feel like planet protectors. So we'll have one more very short video. It's just, I think, about 30 seconds where we have some kids talking about the changes that they found in their families. Who here is protecting the planet more than they were before? Did, did your family change because of it? Yeah, they did. Like turning off the lights more and taking shorter showers and not wasting as much gas. It helped my family take shorter showers because my brother takes 15 more showers, which is this not cool. Um, it taught my family to draw, to not drive more, walk more. It encourages your family to do more, like or more or less of things. My mom turning off lights and my dad not using his car to go to far travels. So what'd you think of that? Awesome! Gonna go do your mission to your Operation Dark Room? Yeah! Yeah! My mom said after planet protectors, they feel like planet And so now I want to just briefly talk about how it works for um, municipalities and other partners to be involved in the Planet Protector Academy. Uh, we know that you want a proven program that uh, has little admin, and it is really plug and play for municipalities. Um, once you have approved the program, we do all the work and all the implementation, and you get the behavior change data in your region at the end. The cost for the program is on a licensed basis for a school year, and if it was just one classroom, it would be $500, but we uh, are happy to talk to you about bulk discounts and what your needs and budgets are, and you can talk to Jen about that. And speaking of Jen, I'm going to bring her back on the call to talk about next steps. Hi again. Uh, so next steps from here on in. Um, all you need to do is approve the program in your area, and we take all the steps to make it happen. Uh, so you would talk to me. Uh, sign a, a letter of agreement that we would work on together, and then we take on the implementation, which means that we approach the teachers and the schools for you. Uh, we deal with the booking process and uh, the teachers, their, their login information, uh, and then we report the results back to you with, uh, when the teachers have completed the program. Uh, so after the webinar today, I'll send you guys an email uh, with a brochure and a link to the, the webinar recording. Hopefully you'll uh, be able to see some of the videos on there as well. And uh, you can send that information to anyone else you know who might be interested or uh, share it with, with managers or uh, anyone else in your area. And uh, then feel free to contact me to discuss things further uh, if you're interested in, in learning more. Great, thanks everyone. I just want to see if anybody had any questions they'd like to ask while we're still on the call. Um, Krista from Langley says, limiting space heating cooling at home seems like a good behavior to target since this is often fossil fuel powered, natural gas as opposed to renewables. What was the rationale in focusing on lights? Ah, that's a great question. The rationale on focusing on lights was purely how easy it is. Um, to get. We wanted the easiest possible thing because we were actually the point of that particular exercise is not so much to save energy, but to train the families to follow their children's lead. And turning off heat is more of a sacrifice. Turning down heat or wearing a sweater is actually more of a sacrifice than just turning off the lights. So if we had a longer program, we would probably have included heat because we know that it's actually a bigger deal in terms of energy saving, particularly here in DC, um, but elsewhere as well. But um, the, the issue there is that teachers wanted a shorter program, so we made it six weeks rather than nine. And then other through classrooms, how do you get kids to visit your website? Um, Danny from Pittsburgh is asking that. So um, um, how do we get kids to visit our website? So, so lots of questions coming through. Thanks. Um, so kids visit our website when they hear about the program and they do it in class. We actually the way that it works to reach teachers are the people that we reach uh, is a bit different. So a municipality or a partner will fund a region, like say Pittsburgh, or they'll say, well, I want 10 classes in Pittsburgh or 15 classes in Ottawa. And 
we then reach out to the teachers in that region and sign them up and they run the program in the classroom. So the teachers actually are the ones introducing the program to the kids. I hope that answers your question. If not, you can um, let me know. Um, let me see what other questions. There's a lot of questions happening. Thank you. Um, what funding was used to create this program and curriculum from Alexandria? Thank you for the question. Um, we had funding from Bill Partners. Uh, TELUS is a communications company in Canada. I don't know if they're in the States as well. They gave us funding as well as Van City Credit Union has been a big partner to us from the business end of things, as well as Metro Vancouver, the region has helped us, and uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, Friends of the Environment Foundation was as well. So we've had philanthropic funders helping to support the development of the program. Um, and we have also worked with Fortis for the Keep Cool Play, so it says, yes, that's, we have those correct. Are there plans for PC interactives for home and classroom? Asked Alice from LACMTA. Sorry if I, if I, could read, if I read that problem, pop, pop, properly. Yes, so this is a program just for the classroom, just to run in the classroom. Um, we do have plans to make other products that are for individual use for children at home. And we have lots of ideas for using mobile technology. There's a lot of possibilities there, especially around measurements. The issue that we didn't use mobile technology here is because we actually want this program to be available to any child anywhere, not just rich children with iPads. Um, so as iPads and iPods and um, cells get more into the school, we will be bringing them into there, but we didn't want that to be an obstacle for kids. Um, other questions do we have? What is the age grade target again? It's grades four to six. That's Rebecca from Ottawa. And how we how else we measure outcomes other than through the game. Um, so the measurement screen that you saw where we asked the children about the four missions. Um, so that's our primary mode of measurement. We also do a lot of surveying. We survey the kids, we survey the teachers. So that from the game, uh, we wanted to include most of the measurement within the game to make sure that it happened, that it wasn't dependent on the teacher finding the time to make sure that the children got the thing that was printed out and sent to them, because then you're going to lose most of the teachers that way because they're so busy. And the second question, oh, I did get both questions. Um, Mara asked from Vancouver, when you talk about driving less, do you talk about riding a bike? Maybe riding a bike to school and kids instead of parents driving them. Yeah, we actually have the kids brainstorm on different modalities of ways to get to school besides driving. And we get them to brainstorm on uh, the things that they can do to deal the solutions that they can bring. And they collaborate together as a class to come up with the solutions. And then we actually have them role play those solutions so that they're practicing telling their parents or guiding their parents, I guess I should say, to um, walk to school or bike to school instead of driving. And can we receive region-specific reports and results? As Laura from Goldstream. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the wonderful things about the digital era is that you can collect data and slice it up and dice it up as you need to. So yes, that's one of the things that we have. We actually, I didn't mention this, but um, we have plans in the future actually to have region-specific sites so that more specific regional information can go in. We still, we at the moment, we have the capacity to do that in a small way. So when we ask, for example, where we ask kids, where do you get your energy from? And we give them the answer. Right now, we have the capacity to give kids the answer for the region that they're in. But we're going to in include that in the future. Next year, we have the ability to have links to programs on the main screen that the kids go to, the teachers go to, so they can see region-specific content that you may have that you want as well. Do we have U.S. cities participating, asks Alexandria. Uh, not currently, though we've had a lot of interest from across the state. So this is actually our first year that we've been using the program with the full website. We are, right now we're in uh, BC, across BC and in Ontario, and, uh, but it is ready to go anywhere, scientifically speaking. Do we link with other organizations, example, Active and Safe Routes to School? asks Rebecca Aaron from Ottawa. Hi, Rebecca. Um, yes, we are really happy to talk with other organizations and partner with them. 
currently um, TransLink we are talking to about bringing the program into their regions again next year. And uh, Sustainable Durham in Ontario we're working with as well. How many hours of classroom time in total? Um, each module, so there's six modules, it takes about an hour for each module, but it's really flexible. Uh, sorry, and those go over six weeks. We have a week in between so that missions uh, take place over one week and then they come back and do the program for another hour. But the program is really flexible and we're finding that teachers can do just the hour that they have, but they're also expanding it um, to include other content and it's a really flexible program that way. So that's one of the things we found from teachers is they wanted to be they wanted it to be flexible. That way it used to be nine weeks, but we made it six with a lot of things as options. Mind you, we are finding that the teachers are using all of the options. So um, six to nine weeks, I guess I would say all in total. I think I asked all the, uh, answered all the questions. Um, are there any further questions that anyone has? Oh, there we go. Will we please send out a price sheet? Yes, we'd be happy to. Um, we'll talk about, and we're again, we're happy to talk to you about your budget in your region as well. So please do communicate with us about that because we're very familiar with uh, the hard lines of municipal budgets. Uh, right? And I'll just take a moment to allow time for any other questions. Again, feel free to contact Jan or myself afterwards to find out any more that you need to know. And Thank you very much for being on the call. Thank you again for your patience with our tech difficulties. We will be doing another webinar again. We will hopefully find another uh, software that will do a better job of sharing our, our program with you. So thanks very much for your time, everyone. And uh, thank you again also. Really, you are all honorary members of the Planet Protector Alliance. We're all out working to help the planet. And so I thank you for the work that you do. And look forward to talking to you in the future.